A little bit of a different stove video for you guys today. I have been getting more into kind of vintage stoves and I've been blowing up eBay trying to buy as many different vintage stoves as I can. I'm working on trying to fix them up. Today's going to be the first kind of fixer up video. We're looking at a Coleman 502. This one's from November of 1974. It was listed on eBay as uh, non-functional parts only basically because they hadn't tried it but um, it works just fine as you'll see here in a second. I'm already well into the process of, uh, of restoring this thing. I'm just waiting on a little bit of paint to dry. But I'm going to take you guys back in time a little bit to when I first opened the box, got this thing out, had not tried it at all, had to decide whether or not I needed to do a full kind of makeover, like really, really dig into it, or if it was working and it was going to be more of a uh, cosmetic restoration. Stay tuned and we're going to take this 502, we're going to take it kind of grungy, rust on different parts, some paint missing, things like that. We're going to do our best, not a full restoration, this isn't some kind of a perfect restoration. This is a restoration you can do in three or four hours at home if you pick up an old stove like this and make it look a lot nicer. Thanks for watching guys. All right, so here's, here's our stove. Um, zoom y'all in a little bit. This is a Coleman 502. Um, if you look on the bottom, you probably can't see it super well, but I can tell you guys it says the Coleman Inc. Wichita, Kansas 1174. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to zoom you in. 1174, so it's a 1974 model. Not the oldest, but gosh, these days, pushing 40 years old which is kind of crazy so when I get a stove like this and I've started to do quite a few more um, antique stoves like this and I'm getting into kind of refurbishing them or restoring them the first question you have to ask is does it work you know is this a full-on uh, rebuild you know do I need to take it apart there's things like graphite plugs and stuff in these different valves do I need to take those out um, or will it work um, I've done nothing to this stove other than pull it out show you guys around it a little bit you can see that there is definitely rust okay throughout down here which is just surface rust should be pretty easy to get rid of looks like this paint is chipping you can see right here so we'll want to take that out strip the paint and repaint it we can use some high heat silver paint for that but does it work? Paint is in pretty good shape, I think. Still has the directions, which is good since I've never lit one of these. So let me put some fuel in here and let's try to light it up. And we'll start with that. Hopefully it lights up without a problem. And then we're looking at just kind of a cosmetic redo to make this thing look a little bit better. Okay, so put some fuel in it. A uh, Couple of things you can do. You wanna see if it can hold pressure. All right, there's no pressure now, obviously, because I haven't pumped it. Let's uh, let's pump it up to see if it's going to hold pressure. Really, just maybe, you know, that should be enough. And it is. I could hear it right there, but you can listen now. All right, that's what you want to hear. So that's a good thing. All right, so let me pump it up and put some pressure into it. Usually, about 20, 25 times is fine. I'm not measuring. All right, there we go. All right, so it says, rotate the cleaner regulator level several times. Leave pointing away from the stove. Open the shutoff valve with quarter and light. Okay, so this is the cleaner. We're just gonna flip it around several times. What we're doing there is the cleaning needles inside of the generator and it's just going through and hopefully clearing the passage. So we leave it pointing away. Now, let me get lighter. So now we will turn this a quarter turn. You can see right here, it says turn a quarter turn. We should hear gas. Ah, and we do, excellent. Now, it can take a few, there we go. It can take a few seconds, and if it's like that, you can just heat the generator tube itself. Well, that's a pretty good deal. This flaming like this is normal as it comes kind of comes up to temperature. Holy moly, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's freaking perfect. 
let it run for a second. I'm gonna turn off this light. Now that's how this thing should run. We can control it with this little red knob. Turn it down, that's pretty good control. How about that? So that's exciting news because, turn this back on. That's exciting news because that means this is just gonna be a, I'm gonna turn it off, just shut the valve off. Go the right way. Shut it off and it'll turn off on its own. That's pretty exciting. That means that this is just gonna be a situation where we need to obviously let this cool. We're gonna take it apart, okay? And we're going to look at the different pieces we're going to decide what we need to refurbish, how to clean them, how to make them look their best. This is not going to be like a full-on showroom restoration. This is going to be making it look nice, nice enough to use on a regular basis because I like to use my stoves. So let me get the lights on. I'm going to let this cool off so we can mess with it and we'll be back in a few minutes. While that cools off, I'll show you guys a new toy I picked up. This is just a really basic um, ultrasonic cleaner. Instead of borrowing my wife's uh, jewelry cleaner. I went ahead and picked one of these up. It's about 150 bucks, uh, so it's not cheap. I've used it on one stove so far, just kind of off camera to see how it worked, and it worked really, really well. And it's a good first step. I bought some cleaning solution, cleaning AP fluids, Master Sages Clean 2020. Uh, make sure you dilute it. It's supposed to be about 10%. So far, it's worked well. I'm letting it get up to temperature. I'm just going to put it about 50 degrees Celsius and I've been running it for five minutes which is the standard uh, I say I've been running it I've run one cycle through it uh, with some other stuff and it worked well this is what I'll use I always keep a little bit of black and silver uh, high heat paint just in case anyway we'll see how this thing works for this uh, project if any of you guys are interested um, I could do a little bit more information about it but so far so good all right I think we're I think we're cool enough. I am gonna put on some gloves. It's something I've never been a fan of, but the truth is I run in and out of the shop through the day and maybe I get stains and stuff everywhere. My wife gets upset, but anyway. So we'll start by taking this off. These are three, looks to me like probably brass screws. So you wanna be careful with brass screws. All right, so this is gonna take this first piece off. And we'll, I'll be curious to see how well the ultrasonic cleaner cleans this. We can run it on a wire wheel also, but that'll be first piece. So I did watch a video on how to do this. Um, you're gonna want three uh, spanners. You want a half, seven sixteenths, and a three eighths. All right, I'm gonna take this down. And just separate it. Oh yeah, there's another bolt. There's another one here. I watched it quickly. There we go. So we undo that. And that's gonna allow us to take the whole generator off. So, oh, there we go. So there's our generator. And I really don't want to take this apart. Um, you can. I mean, you can easily take it apart and clean it. But the thing is, it's working. So we're not going to do that. We're just gonna clean it out with some carb cleaner or something like that, clean the outside. All right, so now we need to take these three off, these three little Phillips screws. Now this, we should be able to take, yeah. So this is the little pack. I don't have the best camera angle. So this is a little pack of, um, and you're gonna have rust on these almost always. So we'll just throw those into the cleaner as well. Now this, this screws off and oh, it wants to come on its own, but what we'll do, all right, maybe that's a little bit better camera angle. I'm not doing a very good job of camera angle for you guys. Tell you what, this, I would rather try to, no, it's not gonna come off without some force. I'm just gonna go real slow here. Oh yeah, there you go. 
sorry, I have to put my hand up there, guys. There's really not another way to do it. There we go. And I think I did minimal, minimal damage to it. Here we go. Y'all can see it's probably, I mean, mildly deformed. Right, maybe in this area. We'll take it. And now, look at this. This is just a ball of rust. And I don't know what to do with this. I'm, I'm not going to, I can't nickel plate. I don't have that available to me. I don't know if this is nickel plated, but it looks plated by something. We're obviously going to remove the rust and, uh, and go from there. Anyway, let's keep taking this thing apart. Okay, so now we've got three more screws here. And this is honestly probably as far as I'm going to take this disassembly. I really don't want to mess with the check valve because it obviously works just fine. I don't want to mess with the um, this valve at all because of the packing. Again, there's graphite packing in there. And why mess with something you don't have to? This will lift completely off. This looks pretty good. Very flimsy. Very, very flimsy. And I think I ordered recently, I haven't got it yet, a, a 500 series from the 60s. And I bet you the collar is much less flimsy. And this is pretty good. This isn't bad at all. This is just stuff we can take off. Any surface rust like this, we're going to, and down here we'll just treat with some rust preventer. And we're going to leave it be. Again, this is not showroom shine. This is just to make it look nice so that I can use it. Um, stuff like this, we'll put it through the rust remover and see what it looks like. Um, we'll just have to see how it turns out because once we remove the rust, it just depends on what kind of finish is left on it. These are the kind of things you can, you can paint if you want to. Uh, I really don't want to. I'm going to try to leave it as natural as possible. This on the other hand, I will clean and probably just repaint this area right here and some of this area up here. Uh, I, th I think this is painted from the factory. I mean, it sure looks like it. This is all just chipping away. So this is going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is run everything through the ultrasonic cleaner. We're going to give it five minutes on the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm not going to put this through. I'll just sand this or uh, take some steel wool and just shine it up a little bit. I'm probably not going to put this through the ultrasonic cleaner either just to maintain the integrity of it i'll just clean it really really good the rest is going to go through the ultrasonic cleaner including our screws and everything um yeah so let's put it in there we'll see what happens and um, i'm going to run it through it's not quite up to temperature yet so i'm going to run everything through and then i'll show you guys what it looks like when it comes out so a little sandpaper high grit sandpaper followed by steel wool. You can see how nice this is. I'm going to do the same kind of just, I might even run this part over a wire wheel. I think it'd be super easy to do with a wire wheel. Uh, it should look really good. All right, let's take a quick look at the pump. All you do is just pull this off and then it'll come right out. Let me get a paper towel here. Okay, looks pretty good to me. We can clean it. This is a leather um, plunger, which is good, and it looks just fine. So we're not gonna mess with it. The um, stem looks fine. You can you can get a tool and you can pull out this check valve. I've pulled one out on a Coleman Peak one, and it was a pain. And that was before I knew a lot about these stoves. I just kind of just jumped in there and did stuff. Don't do that unless you have to. I am going to get some 3-in-1 oil, which is what I've read a lot of people use. And we're just going to put some oil on this leather just to kind of recondition it. Usually works just fine. And I don't think we need to do anything else. To this pump we will get our steel wool 
and just kind of shine this up a little bit. Steel wool does amazing things, guys. This also allows me to get a little bit better access to the little tip right there. Looks pretty good to me. When you put this back in, just be super careful as far as getting that leather in started good. There we go. And same thing with this. Why not? Just run that steel wool over it real quick. Again, I'm not going for perfection, but I would like it to look to look nice. Alright, we'll line up our holes here. You guys should be able to see. I have cleaned this up, ran a wire wheel over all this. Just a wire wheel on a drill. I like my wire wheel on my buffer, but it uh, it's hard to get all in all the little nooks and crannies. So run a wire wheel. After you run the wire wheel, sometimes you get a little bit of an odd finish. So just get some really high grit sandpaper or some double lot steel, steel wool and just buff it out. And it really comes out pretty nice. Did the same thing with our regulator. See, it looks pretty good. And I even got our little screw and got it looking good. So let me show you guys what some of the pieces look like that came out of the um, cleaner. And I'll tell you what we're going to do with each of them. This is the main bell. You can still see there's a lot of rust. So we're going to soak this in some uh, evaporust for probably four to six hours, I would imagine today. So we're going to do that. We're also going to soak all of the, the little um, burner parts to get a little bit of rust off those. And then we can oil those up. I did not put this in the cleaner because I don't know if it's going to ruin this finish. So I just cleaned it really well with a um, soft bristle brush and soap. And I'll polish it up with some, maybe some car wax or something, which I'll polish the main body with as well. And put that aside. Here's the Bunsen tube. And you can see that it's uh, still pretty, I don't know. It's not um, super rusty. In fact, there's really not a lot of rust at all now that I'm feeling it. I'm gonna put it in the evaporust just to try to get a little bit more of the residual rust, probably more on the inside that I can't see. And then I think I'm going to hit this with some paint. Now people might think that's crazy. Um, and I haven't decided yet for sure. I don't know, leave your comments down below. See what happens later in the video. I think it would look nice with some silver paint. It all depends. It might look kind of out of place with everything else. So I might just oil it up and put it back on. Same with this piece. There's just a little bit of rust. I hope I can get some of that off. This is all plated. I would imagine it's nickel plated and it really doesn't look that bad, but hopefully I can just get a little bit of the staining off up here. The other thing I could do is hit it with a wheel, but I'm worried that I'll take that plating. Well, there's no worry. I mean, I will take the plating right off. So let's see what happens. This might be a uh, reason for me to start trying to get into some nickel plating because I think it would look really cool if I could do that. But I think at that point I'd have to get like a sandblaster and I don't know. We'll see. The grate came out pretty good. I'm the, There's no rust. I'm just going to hit this with a wire wheel. This will be my big wire wheel. Same thing with this piece. It does have some rust on the inside, which I think will go away with a wire wheel. This does not have to soak. So we'll, uh, we'll shine that up. And last, the bottom of the burner will be the same thing. We're going to shine this up on the wheel. Should be perfect. So I'm going to go get this stuff into some evaporust because that's going to take, you know, probably four to six hours. We'll keep an eye on it. Then we're going to start working on wire wheeling this stuff and maybe start some other finish work before we get this stuff out and figure out what's best to do with it. All right, so I've got the stuff in the rust remover. You can see how well these pieces turned out. This is the grate, looks really <laughs> great. Uh, this piece right here, it still has a little ring of rust and I could go crazy and I'll probably just maybe get 
a smaller wire wheel and try to get in there, but you won't see it. It's really in there, I ain't gonna lie. I probably should put it in the rust remover. Anyway, I'm gonna do that. And then this other piece looks great, but I will put this other piece in the rust remover here in a second. One thing I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna repaint this, because I think it looks pretty cool the way it is, but it has spots that's got uh, rust. So I'm gonna get some of this Loctite rust resolver. I'm gonna put it on all the spots of rust, especially down here at the bottom. You can see the rim is quite rusty. I'm not gonna worry about the no paint down here, but just the rust on the ends. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that rust remover on there. You let it sit for about 15 minutes and then you wash it all off. So we're gonna do that. Almost done with this. I'm just using some car finishing polish. This is the last side. Should have showed y'all what it looked like before, but it's not a huge difference. And again, I'm not looking for like ridiculous shine. I'm just looking for it to look nice. And that looks nice to me. So I'm not 100% what to do with this. Uh, there's still rust there. I could let it sit a little longer. I'm gonna try this brass wire wheel and just see what it does. So it looks a lot better. Now I need to try to get some of those scratches out and this is gonna take a while. So this is totally when you do what you gotta do. I wanna get in there and sand better it's hard to do on your own so i uh jimmy rigged this thing <laughs> and it's working it's definitely a lot better and now what i'm going to do is use this cutting compound and just polish it the best i can this is about to shoot cutting compound everywhere so i'm going to try to spread it around not too bad. Yeah, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. And I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with y'all. Let me get it out of this contraption and clear up all the cutting compound off of me and my coffee, and I'll show y'all. So for all you guys out there and gals who know a lot more about this than I do, besides actually just plating this thing, what would y'all suggest? I mean, I felt like I had to get the rust out of there, and I did, but I did mar the finish, so... If uh, if plating it, like nickel plating it is the way to go, then I'm going to have to learn how do I prep this thing for nickel plating. I think I have to get all the old plating off. I don't really know. Maybe acid or something. You guys, give me, a, uh, give me an idea down there. But that's what we got for now. And I think it looks a lot better. I'm going to clean up. <laughs> this is horrible. I'm going to clean up and then I'm going to go out and check on the Bunsen. And it's just about time to uh, get this thing going.
I'd say that looks a lot nicer. What do y'all think? Not perfect. I think I am going to look into the possibility of nickel plating to kind of finish this off and make it look really good. But there it is. Let's get some gas in there. Pump it up. Same thing. We'll flip our, let's get these gloves off. Huh? Flip this around several times and leave it pointing towards me. Sounds good. Heat that center tube a little bit. There we go. We're not getting any jo any joy here. So we're gonna close it down. I'm gonna release the pressure. Ooh, with my sweaty hands because of those gloves. Still has pressure. And if it doesn't light, take it apart. We'll take this off and we will put some air through it. Let's just try again to clean it up. Here we go. It's not uncommon sometimes, guys, for these things to be a little finicky. Now what you want to look for, and what I'm going to look for, is any leak. I'll tell y'all what, that is very nice. Still have very good control. Low. And crank it up slowly. I don't know about y'all, but I think it might be time for a little, little boil test. What do y'all think? Let's set it up and boil two cups of water with our newly refurbished fire. Whoa, did y'all hear that? I told y'all, big storm. Let's boil two cups of water here. All right, let's get this thing going. We are going to leave it on high. So I'll just flip it this way. We've got two cups of water, 66 degrees. Go. Start this up. All right, let's see how long it takes to get these two cups of water to a boil with our vintage 1974 Coleman 502. I believe it's a 502A or 502700 or I don't know. One of the 502s, somebody out there knows for sure. So let me let us know which exact model this is. But really happy with how it turned out. Let's we'll see how it performs. All right, it's boiling. It's boiling. So seven minutes, 10 seconds, fairly long boil time, really, uh, in my experience. Of course, as we said, this is older technology. It does have very good uh, blue flame, very, um, very efficient flame, but it definitely takes longer, just uh, not as effective at getting the heat directly to the bottom of the pot as some of the newer stoves are. As I was editing this video, I thought, man, that is a really slow boil time. This thing should be faster, shouldn't it? I mean, I would think it would be. I kind of looked on the internet, watched a couple of videos, and it seemed like it just wasn't fast enough. And I thought, you know, I never went in and cleaned appropriately, cleaned the, uh, the generator and all that stuff. I figured because it was running that it would be fine. Well, I figured I was probably wrong. So I went back the next day, a couple of days later actually, um, I took apart the entire thing, took the generator apart. The spring inside of it was super, super stuck. I mean, super stuck. Watched a couple of videos on how to get it out. One gentleman recommended heating it up, quenching it in water, heating it up, quenching it in water, and I did that four or five times. I also put tons of PB Blaster and carb cleaner and all kinds of stuff. Finally put some PB Blaster in there, heated it up with that, it got all super hot, quenched it a few more times, and was finally able to get that out of there. Then I used a gun cleaning kit, and I, I you know, reamed that thing out, got it super clean on the inside. 
I also got the pickup tube out of the actual um, tank, down the bottom of the tank. Put that through my ultrasonic cleaner, cleaned everything really, really well, turned it back on, and sure enough, it got a lot stronger. In fact, let me show you guys the boil test I just did, which showed much better results. In the house, to give himself thinking time, it seemed, in this space, you've seen her, said Harry. She's my friend Ron's mother. She was meeting him off the hog, off the school train at the end of last term. He had almost said Hogwarts Express, and that was a sure way to get his uncle's temper up. Nobody ever mentioned the name of Harry's school aloud in the Dursley household. Uncle Vernon screwed up his enormous face as though trying to remember. The first thing he saw was that Hedwig was back. She was sitting in her cage, staring at Harry with her enormous amber eyes, and clicking her beak in a way that meant she was annoyed about something. Exactly what was annoying her became apparent almost at once. So instead of 7 minutes 10 seconds, 4 minutes 37 seconds or so, that's 2 minutes 33 seconds, 2 and a half minutes faster, and that seems a little bit more reasonable to me. Still, you know, that cleaning needle makes a huge difference. Uh, today, I had gotten this thing running a couple of days ago, and today I came out and did the actual bull test, and initially it wasn't burning very good, so I just kept flipping that uh, little red knob putting the cleaning needle in and out, and then on one of the times I flipped it, it just poof, just came to life and made a big, big difference. So that ends our little saga here with the Coleman 502. Um, took it apart, learned quite a bit. I, I have learned a little bit even since I started this process. Uh, there's a gentleman, I'll leave a link down below. I don't even remember the name of his uh, channel. I think it's Bluegrass Bushcraft. I don't know. He's done quite a few things with these stoves. He boils his uh, brass parts in vinegar, which I have done with other stoves. I did it with my 50, excuse me, with my 500, and it worked extremely well. I have it running very well. So, anyway, just, just, just learning about these stoves. I talked about it in a, a live stream we did recently uh, with you guys. I had a lot of fun. Anyway, like I said, that is a look at the Coleman 502. I will probably do a full detailed review just of this. Uh, this is the first video I kind of did a hybrid of restoration as well as stove testing and I think the plan will be to put restoration videos on my Paleo Maker MD channel and maybe we'll grow that Paleo Maker channel a little bit. Hope you guys like this video. Hope you all like the vintage stoves. I've got quite a few lined up coming up for you guys. Very excited about them. Uh, more Coleman stoves and I'm also looking for more vintage stoves. I've got a Primus kerosene stove. I've got several military stoves from Coleman that I've picked up. I'm getting them running. We're going to make some videos on those as well. Do me a big favor, guys. If you like the video, if you like this style of video, hit the thumbs up down below. really helps spread things across YouTube. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that notification bell. And you'll be the first to know. We'll put If you guys have any recommendations for vintage stoves for me to do, I'll give you a little heads up on what I have so far. I'm just kind of looking around. I've got the Optimus 8R that we're going to fix up and do a review on. I've got the Stesco camp stove, which is a little coil stove. We've got the Primus number 100. We've got the 500 series. I need to pick up a 500A from Coleman. I also have the 520, which is the original military version of the uh, little pocket stove. I've got the later version, which is the M1950. And then um, I'm also gonna try to pick up the 530, which is the civilian version of the 520. Also just looking for other stoves, so make sure you give me some ideas down below. A lot of them can be very expensive online, and I'm just gonna keep an eye over the next year or two, try to find good deals, which is what I've done with these others. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the channel. Hope you like this video. Stay tuned for more videos soon.